to our weekly high five, where we're gonna highlight five awesome things that have happened in the life of MCC this past week. Let's get started. Up at number five, 2020 gave a whole new meaning to the phrase zoom, zoom, zoom. Online meetings for work, family, school, and more. But a huge high five goes out to a great number of people from MCC who participated in virtual small groups in 2020. They discovered new friendships, studied God's word, and experienced true connection and encouragement in much needed times. Groups are for everyone, so visit mcconline.com to view a list of different types of groups and join that one that best fits what you're looking for. Here at number four, this past week, MCC students confirmed plans for Deep Freeze 2021. This weekend for students includes every snow activity, times of worship, small groups, and so much more. So save the date, March 12th through the 14th. Registration begins on January 4th at mcconline.com or through MCC students on social media. High five to all the students planning on attending this winter getaway. In at number three, we recently received feedback from a woman who watched MCC's Christmas special on WMUR. She grew up following her grandmother's religious traditions because she loved her grandmother. As time went on though, the traditions faded away and left her feeling disconnected from God and not worthy of being known by him. In listening to the message of hope in the Christmas special, God touched her heart. She was completely overwhelmed by the truth of his love. With great joy, she realized, yes, he does love me. He is with me, he is my hope. So high five, sister. This is true for everyone and true of you as well. Here at number two, the songwriters of Station Worship have been working on a new song called Jesus Victorious. This is a song about God's faithfulness and how Christ's victory leads us with courage through the valleys of life. High five to Station Worship for this song. I can't wait for this song to be on our hearts and on our lips. And finally, at number one, this past week, MCC kicked off a brand new teaching series called Walk On. What a great series for starting off a new year. A message called Not So Fast last week had us studying God's faithfulness and goodness. I can't wait to see how God will lead us and direct us in this new year. We're so glad that you've joined us for our weekly high five, and we can't wait to join together and worship with you in just a moment.
came alive. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. You spoke my name and my heart came to life. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. I want to sing about it. I want to scream and shout it. I want to sing it right now. Welcome to Family Service. I'm Johanna Beachy, the Family Life Pastor, and I get to ask you a whole bunch of questions. So here's how it goes. We watch this message together, and at certain points, we're gonna pause. I'm gonna throw out some questions for you to talk about with your family, and then we'll continue on learning together. So if you are ready right now, we're gonna dive into week two of our series, Walk On. And we're gonna get started right now. Happy New Year. Oh, it's finally here, right? I mean, this thing we've been waiting for, 2021. Woohoo! <laughs> happy New Year. For real, Happy New Year. I do, I hope you're having a, a very happy New Year. And I do hope that, that 2021 is, is happy uh, for all of us. Uh, I, I honestly think that's a, a lot of the heartbeat of God. I, there's a kind of a nasty rumor out there that says God doesn't care about happiness, but that's ridiculous. And God cares about happiness because he knows we care about happiness. Happiness matters. And yeah, uh, sure, there are some things that uh, maybe are greater than happiness, like joy, you know, being, uh, being content in, in our circumstances, regardless of, of what's going on. But, but what if we could be happiness in difficulties? Instead of just having everything be magically okay, uh, that's not gonna work anyway. Uh, there's still problems, there's still issues. And so uh, to find a happiness in God, I think that's a key. And I think that's what God has for us in 2021. If you're like 2020 could, could teach us anything, it, it might be to say, hey, 
You know what? Uh, there can be genuine, soul-satisfying happiness in the midst of really trying circumstances. And so we're ready to walk on into 2021, to just let's go, let's walk on, but let's make sure that we truly are walking on, uh, that we're moving forward in God's plan. You see, we have this unchanging God that is ever revealing. And so we don't wanna go back to anything. I, I know there's that kind of sentiment that, that is kind of in us a little bit, maybe a lot of bit, it, it's out there, you know, that we really just wanna go back to normal. And there's been a lot of talk of that. So most of us are pretty much removing that from the vernacular going, okay, there, there is no normal or whatever the new normal will be. Yeah, well, first of all, there's no normal. It's always new and, and things are always changing and it's always different, but that's good because God's always making himself known. He's always revealing himself. And we don't wanna to return to something. Instead, we wanna walk on forward into what God is doing and what he's up to. And, and here's what I can tell you, he's up to something really good really good, and he's got good things in store for you, uh, for his church, uh, for the communities that we get to live in, our, our worlds, our homes and neighborhoods and workplaces and schools and communities. God's on the move. And so we're gonna walk on into that, not going back to something that was there before, but rather we're gonna walk on into that. Now, our memory verse for this series is found in Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. It says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. All right, really graphic there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it to you again. All right, I want you to hear this. Proverbs 26, 11. As a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. All right, the, the scriptures sometimes do paint a, a pretty graphic picture and maybe you just went, ooh, gross. I, I mean, yeah, if, if you understand the, the proverb at all, if you caught the imagery there, it, it is really gross. But here's the thing about a dog, as a dog owner, having had many dogs and right now having three dogs, dogs are, are pretty spectacular. Like I, I love them. But something that maybe if you're not a dog owner that you don't know about is that when a dog vomits, it's, it's a whole scene, okay? A dog's not like, you know, somebody who just is like sitting there talking to you one minute and then goes and throws up. That's not what a dog does. A dog goes through this whole progression. I mean, there is like this whole thing that happens where the dog starts going. And it's, it's heaving and it's, it's hunching. And no matter where you're in the house, when you start hearing the, you're like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. I mean, I mean, this is the moment. You've got a window there to get that dog outside before you're gonna have some throw up on your floor. But it's longer than you think because it takes a lot for that dog to, to get that out of its system. Now, the crazy thing about that is, is oftentimes when a, when a dog does that, regurgitates, the dog will then return back and eat it. Look it up. I know it's gross. I don't even want to say it, but that's what it is. Look, look it up. And if you've seen this, you're like, oh, you know, and then the dog comes in and, you know, kisses your wife and you don't tell her. You know, it's gone down. You don't even let her know because it's gross. But in the same way, it's, it's gross when we've been through something where God has maybe purged us of some things that were unhealthy, purged us of some things that were causing damage, purged us of things that if they had remained inside of us would have done a lot of harm. How foolish would it be if instead of walking on into what he has coming, we went back and tried to do what he's already purged from us. I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of wonderful things that happened during 2020, and I understand there's also a lot of really challenging things, but in the midst of, of those challenges and those difficulties, God was working. And a lot of what he was doing uh, was he was giving us a space to, to break some patterns of behavior that were damaging just damaging. I mean, uh, the, the new mindsets that he's brought to us about how we, how we can communicate with one another and how we can share his love in new ways, how, how we can reach more people in different ways. I mean, God is up to something really powerful. So we don't want to miss out on that. We want to walk on into what he has for us. Now, there's an enemy to this, okay? An, an enemy is going, well, no, this is, this is how it's always been, and so it's how it'll always be, and it's called inside-the-box thinking. Now, let's take a look at this. Inside-the-box thinking is all defined by limitations. 
Uh, here, here are the parameters. It's inside the box, okay? I got the box right here. It's, uh, it's nice, it's tidy, it's neat, it's clean. Everything fits in my little box. But it's defined by limitations. Here are the edges of the box. I've got a bottom to my box, I've got four sides around my box, and I got a top for my box. Here is my box. Now, I, I want you to stick, stick with me here. I, I think all of us kind of put God in a box. Uh, the, the box of our perceptions, the box of our experiences, the, the boxes of what we've been taught, the, uh, the box of, of, of religion. That's a boxed expression of God, like, hey, let's define all the parameters and let's put them in place. And this is how we understand God and who we are and how we navigate the world that we're living in. But it's defined by the limitations. All right, so in that, I, I know for me, um, to kind of always want my, my God box to be expanding and really to take the lid off and, and be free to look up and look around and, and get outside of that to experience more of what God has for us. I remember one time reading a, a book. Uh, it was a part of the space trilogy that C.S. Lewis wrote. And it's this, this three-part series. Um, it's kind of sci-fi. C.S. Lewis, I didn't even know that he had written this kind of fiction. He's the guy that wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Maybe you've read that. I wrote a lot of incredible books like Mere Christianity, The Great Divorce. Um, but the Space Trilogy, I remember reading them and just being in awe of how much bigger God is than I could ever even begin to imagine or conceive. And so, we want to get outside of that box because inside the box thinking is defined by the limitations. Now, Jesus talks about this because in our religious expressions, a lot of times that's what it is. It's like, okay, let's get God inside a package that works for us. In Mark chapter seven, verse six, uh, Jesus is speaking. He says, he replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are mere human rules, merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And so what Jesus was saying is like, you know, Isaiah, the prophet in the Old Testament was, was talking about you guys. Like you can't even, he's saying you can't recognize who he is and what he's doing and what he's up to because there are all these preconceived notions, these religious expressions and teachings that had created the box that God had been put in. Now, when I think about that, I, I think these box expressions and thought processes are really a way that, that we toy with God. And let me be clear, God is not a child's plaything. He's not a toy. He's the almighty creator of the universe and he is good and he is holy and he is righteous and he is powerful and he is alive and he is moving and he is ever revealing. And if we've got it all figured out and got him in a nice little box, that's, that's really a control issue, which is ultimately a lordship issue. I think a lot of our, our religious expressions kind of come down to control. We get God in our box and here's the parameters and here's how God can work. Here's when he works. Here's the ways in which he works. Here's the things that God uses and the things that God doesn't. Then it's almost like we got our God in a box and when we're ready, we can go in there and wind it up, wind it up, wind it up. And then ah, there he is. He came out of the box when, when we wound him just the right way. Ah, there he is. Oh, but God is so much more than that. So much more. He is. And it's not about how we wind him up or how we try to package him and control him and contain him. Instead, he's giving us an opportunity to recognize who he is and what he's up to. And when we do that, then we also begin to understand, well, who am I? And what's he up to in me? And what do I get to be a part of? God's plans are amazing. And so if we're gonna get... Uh, it, moving on this a little bit, then we need to understand these inside the box limitations. They focus on some things. Inside the box thinking is gonna focus on the, the good old days. Well, you remember the good old days. We just wanna, we just wanna get back to the, to the good old days when it was good. I just wanna remind you, it wasn't that good. I mean, that doesn't mean that God hasn't done some really good things. I mean, I can even think in recent history and, and my experience in New Hampshire with MCC and I mean, yeah, to celebrate and remember and be thankful for the ways that God has moved in the past. Yes, yes, yes. 
But I don't want to focus on that because God's doing some new things in some new ways that are going to reach some new people. And we could just kind of keep repeating the same behaviors and same activities, expecting different results, but that doesn't work. It's crazy. And so as, as God is moving, it's not that, that we forget. We're just not going to focus on the good old days. We can remember and celebrate and, and rejoice in that, but we're not going to focus on that. Instead, we want to focus on where we're going. Let's walk on. Well, let's walk on into the newness of what God has and how he's revealing himself. Inside the box also focuses on traditions without meaning. Now this word traditions, it, it, it can be a bit of a, of a trigger word, I, a word, I guess. Um, I, I, I'm not down on traditions. I think traditions are awesome and wonderful. In fact, the, the college I went to, Texas A&M University, is, you have to go to a week of fish camp before you start school there just to get indoctrinated into the traditions of the school. Lots of really cool things. But the reality of that is not just to learn the traditions, but they want to teach you the meanings behind the traditions. And so traditions can be useful when they have meanings. But sometimes the traditions lose their meanings and just become activities, things we do. We don't even know why anymore. And when they lose their meaning, then uh, oftentimes we, we get so focused on those that, that we lose sight over what God is really up to. I remember one time, uh, Summer and I, we visited a, a church. This was years ago. And um, we noticed that we were just enjoying a worship service. We were visiting some friends who were on staff at this church. And when it came time for like communion, we we're in this uh, church building, a 120 year old church. And it came time for communion. And there was this group of men who walked down the center aisle and they came down to this table at the front and there was a tablecloth over it. And then they took the corners of the tablecloth and they all gathered around and there was this ceremonial folding of the tablecloth. And I'd never seen anything like that. I was like, well, what, what was that all about? And everybody was completely quiet. It was like seven minutes of just, sitting, watching them fold this tablecloth. And after the service, I asked my friend, I go, hey, man, what was up with the tablecloth? He goes, man, I don't, I thought the same thing. I was trying to figure that out when I got here. I'm like, well, why are they doing that? Well, he ends up telling me that what had happened was is the church was 120 years old. Well, 100 years previous, they didn't have air conditioning in the church. And so the windows would all be open. And during the summertime, they would have the communion table out with bread and grape juice. And the flies would come and land on the bread and grape juice because the windows were open. And so they put a tablecloth over it to keep the flies off. And then it just kind of became this thing where it's like, well, we don't just want to throw the tablecloth off to the side. We should probably fold it and do that with some decorum. And 120 years later, they've got this tradition that made no sense. And nobody could tell you what it was about or why they were doing it. It had a practical purpose at, at one point in time, but no longer served that. But it became very integral into what they were doing to where it was an untouchable part of their worship experience. The same thing can happen. We focus on those traditions without meaning. Now, traditions with meaning are great, but what if God's creating some new traditions? That'd be fun. And then it also uh, focuses on form over function. Form over function. We lose sight of what's actually useful, what's actually uh, accomplishing the purposes that we're trying to and our expressions of our, of our love for God and our devotion to him. And so we get focused on that and that's that we're stuck in the box. We're saying, no, this is how it is and this is how it works. And, and when we're in that place, uh, me, you, any of us, uh, we tend to get really defensive and super ouchy. Uh, and understandably, I mean, Jesus is saying things like, whoa, you hypocrites. I mean, you've lost sight of it. You, you've, you've given your, your life now to the, the form over the function. It's not really about uh, necessarily engaging and experiencing God in worship and God being revealed through the worship of his people. But now it's about the way you like to do it. Something that can happen to any of us. God really is on the move in 2021. That is for sure. And we get to walk on with him. So as we think about getting out of the box, and not putting like limitations or these meaningless traditions around what God is doing, I have some questions for you. So here's the first one. How has your understanding of God grown over the years? Talk about that together. Learn from each other on that. And here's another question. Are there any new traditions in your family this year? So hit pause, take some time talking about that together. Whenever you're ready, just press play and we'll continue on.
welcome back, family. If you're ready to go, we're going to keep listening in to this message. All right, so that's inside the box thinking. But what about outside the box thinking? Outside the box thinking looks for opportunities. It says, all right, what's happening? Where are we going? I mean, it gets the lid off, it gets the head up, and it goes, okay, God, what are you doing? Where are you moving? Uh, what are the opportunities that are before us? What are you up to that's new? And God's always up to new things. Uh, like, like I said, he's unchanging, but he is ever revealing. And if we don't have our heads up, we're gonna miss out on what he's doing. So uh, we gotta get our, our heads out of these boxes and really look for what God is doing. That's why I fully believe that, that trials and, and challenges and struggles, they aren't curses. They're opportunities. Uh, sometimes we look at, at a problem and we say, well, here's a problem and God must be mad at us. And well, I guess there's, there's no hope. No, 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 no. Problem is opportunity. A challenge is opportunity. A struggle is opportunity. God, what are you, what are you doing in the midst of this? Because he's unchanging. His goodness does not shift. It is solid and steady, and so he's unchanging, and so we wanna look for the, the new things that, that God is doing. In John chapter four, Jesus is having a conversation with a Samaritan woman at a well, which God is ever revealing. And, and in this conversation, this is quite honestly, like the first person Jesus has, is revealing himself to as being the Messiah. He is he's saying, I'm he, I, I am the Messiah, I am the promised one. A Samaritan woman at a well, breaking through all the like social norms that they had in their day. You know, a, a Jewish man talking to a Samaritan woman alone at a well. He was asking her for help. Can you give me something to drink? And, and yet here is this conversation. And this woman, she has some questions for Jesus. And they're kind of religious-based questions. She's trying to figure out what, what he's talking about because it doesn't fit in her box. She's limited in her way of thinking. So she's asking him questions. And so... She asked Jesus, okay, tell me then, um, you Jews say that we're supposed to worship in Jerusalem at the temple. But our people, the Samaritans say we worship on this mountain. So who's right? Do we worship on this mountain or in Jerusalem? And very religious based, question, which we still do today. Like, where am I supposed to worship? Where do I go? Like, well, what, are the, what are the parameters? What's the box? Explain it to me. And so she's asking Jesus that question and Jesus' answer, wow. Verse 21, woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. So Jesus starts using these words, spirit and in truth. It's pretty easy to, to get focused on the, the form over function, the, the religious parameters, the box. And yet what Jesus is doing is saying, no, no, I need, I need you to get your head out of the box. I need you to look around because I'm, I'm doing something here. I'm, I am unchanging, but I'm ever revealing. And it, it's not, it, the temple served a purpose. I mean, by 70 AD, that temple was destroyed. It's never been rebuilt. Uh, the expressions on the mountain, they, they served a purpose. But now uh, through Jesus and through the indwelling of his Holy Spirit, now we have the opportunity to worship in spirit and in truth. Uh, the truth being the reality of God with us, his presence, not just the hope of it or somehow trying to appease God or, or make peace with God. Instead, the, the truth of peace has been made with God. Peace on earth, good will to men, that this peace has come, the Prince of Peace, he has come, he has laid down his life, he has taken our sin inside of him, he has paid the consequences of our sin, which is death, he was dead, buried, crucified, on the third day, he rose again, he came back, conquered death, and he sent his Holy Spirit to, to dwell inside of us, so that we can worship in spirit and in truth. That our, our worship isn't merely words or human traditions or religious activities. 
They're not hoops that we're jumping through. We're not winding up the God box. We're not rubbing the magic lamp. Instead, it's an expression of lives that belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that have a greater hope than the here and now, that have real meaning and purpose and, and passion. And so this outside the box thinking, it focuses on some different things. It focuses on principles over methods. A, a phrase I, I learned very early in ministry goes like this. Uh, methods are many, principles are few. Methods always change, principles never do. And so yes, there are, there are principles and those don't change, those are unchanging, but the methodology, it better change. It better because it needs to change. There are, there are new ways to reach new people and to express who we are and what God is doing. But if we let those methods become principles, you may think, well, that's not that big a deal. It's a huge deal because now you got way too many principles. That's where you start fighting over ridiculous stuff, arguing and dividing and turning on one another and biting and devouring each other and, and tearing each other apart. And, uh, and the family of God, the body of Christ, it becomes, it doesn't represent him at all. You start, you start fighting about this crazy things, totally losing sight of worshiping in spirit and in truth, the, the reality of what God has for us and the mission that he's called us to, to reach the most people in the shortest time to offer our lives as, as living, as a living sacrifice to him. It also focuses on present day needs. Not the good old days, not the glory days, but oh, okay, right now, what, what's happening? You get your head out of the box, you look around, you look at the world, you survey. You survey the world, you, you listen to people. What are they saying? It's not just even how they're saying it, but, but what are they saying? What are they communicating? We're not turning a deaf ear to that. So we want to tune in and go, okay, what are you saying? What are you communicating from that? What are you asking? What are you desperate for? What are the needs? We listen. Because we're getting outside of that box. It's unchanging yet ever revealing God. He's revealing himself in new ways to new people. It also focuses on effective expressions. I, sometimes, uh, you know, as things change, I, I know I can be a kind of a lightning rod or a focal point for the irritation that comes with that. And yes, there is irritation and, and change. I, I understand that. But listen, I, I, I'm not doing what I want. My worship isn't about what I want. My expressions of faith and, and how, we, how we're navigating this world and doing it as a, as a local um, body of Christ, family of God, the church together, our, our community, it's not what I want. It, it's okay, what works? And what do I mean what works? I don't mean necessarily what makes me comfortable. In fact, it should make me uncomfortable. It should make you uncomfortable. We all need to be a little more uncomfortable. It ought to make us uncomfortable. I mean, if we're all comfy, cozy, peachy keen and rosy, we gotta get out of the box. Let's get out there and let's get uncomfortable. Let's get a little irritated in, in some really godly ways. Die to self. Look, I, I can't tell you exactly where God is leading, but I know this, and I've been sharing it with our elders and our staff and anybody who will listen. I know it's gonna involve more dying to self than any of us can ever begin to imagine. And yes, it should, absolutely should, because that's exactly what Jesus told us. If we wanna follow him and be his disciples, then we lay down our lives, we take up our crosses and let's go. That's the only way to follow him. And if we're not dying to self, if we're not uncomfortable, it stands the reason we probably stopped following Jesus. I'm not okay with that. I'm, you better not be okay with that. We wanna follow him. We wanna see these effective expressions of, of faith. Let's you and I keep climbing out of that box. You know, I love the way that Jesus interacted with the Samaritan woman and invited her to engage with God in a completely new way. And it turns out that when she got out of the box, there were some really cool opportunities in front of her. And there are for you and me too. So let's answer these questions together. Here's the first one. 
What new things do you see God doing with his church? This one makes me so excited for you guys to talk about. And then here's another one. What present day needs do you see around you? Talk about those two questions together with the people that you're with. Take as much time as you want. Press play when you're ready to continue on. All right, family, I hope your discussions have been exciting and encouraging. Let's continue on right now in this message. So what we're doing isn't just religious activities, but let's get out of the box. And as we, as we get out of the box, then we're able to, okay, we're going to worship in spirit and in truth, as Jesus promised. In spirit, these are the kind of worshipers the the Father wants. Well, what does it mean to worship in spirit and truth? Well, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing about the Holy Spirit. If you're going to learn anything about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit cannot be contained. So let's knock off trying. Let's stop trying to build more boxes, more parameters, more lids. There are principles. There are guardrails. The, the scriptures hold these things for us. If it runs outside uh, the parameters of scripture, then okay, yeah, it's not the Holy Spirit because he's unchanging yet ever revealing. And the methodologies and the way God is, is revealing himself will always be changing. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit cannot be contained. In John chapter three, Jesus is having a, a conversation with a religious leader. Uh, but a guy who was earnestly seeking, he wanted to know. He came to Jesus, this guy named Nicodemus. And in John chapter three, verse three, it says, Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Well, okay. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Again, pause for the ooh, yeah? Verse five, Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. This is what, what Jesus is up to. When Jesus talked to his disciples before his crucifixion, he kept telling them, okay, the Spirit is coming. He said, it's good that I'm gonna go away because something better, so my, the Spirit's coming and he'll be with you and he'll be in you. And so really what we have the opportunity to do is, as, as followers of Jesus is to be born of the Spirit, not only born of water, or born of, in flesh, even to experience uh, the waters of baptism, being baptized into Christ, a new creation, but really the, the baptism of being born in the Spirit. That it's, it's a full transformation. Full transformation mind, body, and soul, all of us. We hold nothing back from him. So what does it look like to, to be spirit-filled? Well, it's, it's not as complicated as you think. And, and okay, yeah, there can be some weird stuff, but it's, you know, it's not that weird. It's just think about it. To be filled with the spirit means that you think godly thoughts. He changes our mind. Start to think differently. It's not about me and what I want and what I think and what should be and uh, this is a God issue. It's him and what he's doing. And I just want in on what that is. And it ought to make me uncomfortable and it ought to be challenging. And, and there should be sacrifice involved in this. All for his glory and goodness. So I'm gonna I start to think godly thoughts. If I'm spirit filled, then I'm gonna say godly words. It, it, it changes the, the words we say. Like we're not about to waste uh, these, these words these words that, that we have the opportunity to, to use and, and steward. And we're not gonna waste those words on attacking politicians. We're not gonna waste those words on attacking people uh, that may be our rivals or that come against us. We're not gonna waste those words on worldly things and silly little arguments. How these, these words are to be stewarded, to glorify God and to, and to point people to him and to share good news and to do godly things. Our lives aren't wasted on temporary things that do not last. Instead, when we're filled with the Spirit, then we become fixated and focused on, well, 
Hey, what other godly things I get to do? Don't even try to contain the Holy Spirit because none of us can do it. You can't do it. I can't do it. And I love that we get to be full of the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit helps us and leads us to think godly thoughts and to say godly words and to do godly things, which is so cool. And I get excited thinking about all the things that the Holy Spirit can help you to do. And speaking of which... Here's the question that I have for you to talk about together. What are the godly things that God is asking you to do? Take some time, think about that, talk about it together, ask that question and answer it with one another. And then when you're ready, just press play and we'll come back and finish the message. All right, welcome back, family. We're going to finish out this message together right now. And so as we, as we think about walking on into, into 2021, let's go, yeah. I, I hope you're in. But let's, let's not go back to some things that, that, praise God, he's maybe purged us of. And let's not become limited by those, but rather, I mean, here's the chance, okay? Get your head out of the box. I think it's all on the table. What's God gonna do? How's he gonna use all these different things? And, and by the way, it's, it, it's probably not, like not one thing or another. It, I think he's, he takes and he says, okay, here, go. And when, when we step into that and say yes to the moving of his Holy Spirit, well, his Holy Spirit cannot be contained. It blows like the wind. And those who are born of the Spirit, they're, they're like the wind. They're, they're blown. And it's not a, real, it's not a real clear roadmap for that. But let's do it. Let's see what God will do and where he will lead us. And as a, as a part of a local church, MCC, I'm so glad that that we get to do this together, we get to celebrate it, we get to press into that, we get to discuss it, we get to pray for one another, we get to encourage one another and, and all the more, and, and we have opportunities and ways to, to meet together and speak to one another and inspire one another. Yes. But let's make sure that it's always focusing on the mission that God has given us to reach the most people in the shortest time for His glory and honor yielding to his Holy Spirit. So right now, I just wanna, I wanna give us all an opportunity to take a deep breath. Come on, deep breath in the nose. Out the mouth. Just say, yes, yes, Spirit. Yes, Spirit of God, yes. Do a new thing, yes. Spirit of God, do a new thing. Yes. We ask that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, I the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, because it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, you will always be. It's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, and nothing else matters. Jesus. 
Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves, falls around you, Lord. Jesus, you. So from my heart to the heavens, Jesus, be the center. Because it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus, be the center. It's all about you, Lord. Oh, it's all about you. And nothing else. Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you, Jesus, you, Jesus, you. We get to have communion together. So you can grab whatever you have on hand, some crackers, bread, and then some water or juice and use that for supplies. So you can just pause right now, go grab that and then come back whenever you're ready. When we have communion, we are together as Jesus's church, as his family, remembering his sacrifice and the way that he changed everything for us. This is something we get to do together as we focus in on Jesus and the fact that he rescued you and me when he died on the cross and rose again for us and that he broke us free from sin and death and changed everything and is still changing everything today. So we hold this bread and we remember Jesus's sacrifice, the way that he died for me and he died for you. We take this together in remembrance of Jesus. We hold this cup and we remember Jesus's blood that he was willing to give up for us and that his blood, it is more powerful than anything else, more powerful even than any sin, than even all the sin in the entire world. So we take this together and we thank Jesus for what he has done. Jesus, we love you so much. We thank you for the way that you sacrificed yourself for us, that you died on the cross and rose again to change everything, that you love us in a way that we get to share with other people. We thank you that your love has changed our lives and the lives of the people around us. We pray all of this in your name, amen. You and I and every single person that we know is invited to take part in giving. This is an amazing way that God invites us to obey him and to experience the joy and the freedom that comes from giving and taking part in growing his kingdom. Now, there are a lot of ways that you can take part in giving. One of the simplest and easiest, if you have a phone, is to just text give MCC to 77977. Or if you want to give with cash or with check, you can mail that right in. So if you're a kid and you want to give, you can mail in your giving to Manchester Christian Church at 1308 Wellington Road, Manchester, New Hampshire, 03104. You can also set up your giving right online. If you go to manchesterchristian.com slash give, you can set up recurring giving that way, which is a great way to set that as a pattern and a rhythm in your life. I really do thank you for obeying God and experiencing this freedom that we get through financial giving because I know that when we give, lives change. I'm gonna pray for our giving and I would love it if you would pray with me. God, right now today, we thankfully 
and gratefully come before you and say, we're just so excited that we can take part in growing your kingdom and sharing your love with people like this. We pray over this giving and over these gifts. We know that you'll use them to reach many people, to change this world, for people to know who you are and to grow your kingdom. And so we're just thankful that we can do this. And we ask that we would have the courage to obey you in this and to experience the freedom of it. We pray all of this in your awesome and your holy name. Amen. We are here for your family in whatever your next step might be in this new year, whether that is joining a group or maybe someone wants to be baptized or if that's setting up giving or you just want to talk with someone or pray with someone or if there's specific resources that you're looking for for your family, maybe a Bible or a devotional, we would love to support you in that. You can email me with any questions or next steps or prayer requests at jbeachy at manchesterchristian.com and our team would love to come around and support your family as you take your next step and grow together this year.